previously. The left side of my butt's cold. And so we go. Hello friends, my name is Renate and welcome back to Professor Layton in the Curious Village. Now, you may notice that we are not where we were uh, earlier. And that is because I was wandering around and look, we could go this way. Fancy that. So, we, we can come out here and I just thought that was really cool. There's a great view of the entrance to the village from here. There's my lovely auto little automobile, it seems unharmed. Don't worry professor, no one would even dream of selling the Layton mobile. Just, what do you mean by that, Luke? Can I get another, um, puzzle from it? Certainly didn't foresee the sewers leading to a place like that. Look, Luke, there's my automobile. We can get away. You and your girlfriend went on a road trip over the weekend. On the way to your destination, you drove 180 miles, and your girlfriend drove the rest of the way. Coming home the exact same roads, your girlfriend drove the first 150 mile, and you got behind the wheel for the last leg of the journey. What's the difference of miles between the distance you drove and the distance your girlfriend drove? Okay. It's 30 miles. Not 30 miles? Think you need to drop a formula to solve this one? Think again. Finding the solution fi finding the solution is easier than you imagine. Okay. Alright. Hmm. So let's say it's twenty more miles, right? To get to wherever you're going. That's 200 miles altogether. So, he drove 180, she drove 20. So on the way back, she drove 150. That would mean he had to drive 50. If it's 200, we're just gonna say it's 200. So, 150 plus 20 is 170. 50 plus 180 is 200 and... My brain disappeared. 230? No. 18, 19, 20, 25, 26, 26. 130. Let's say it was just 10 more miles, right? Because, wait a minute. That would put it at, let's see, 170 versus... Is it 230? Yeah. 230 would make it... 60 mile difference. Right? No. Yes, 60 miles. So let's say it's only 10 more miles. That would mean it's 190. So let's say it's 190 altogether. That means this is 10 miles. Um, that means 190 minus 150 would be 40. I, or I, yeah, okay. So that would be 220 versus uh, 160. Should also be a difference of 60. So the difference is 60 miles, not 30. Oops. Forgot uh, about the way back, just the way there. There we go. Also, um, out of curiosity, I looked up some stuff about the um, the rooms for Layton and uh, Luke, which is how I also found out that there might be a puzzle over here. Um, apparently, I had it really wrong. So I thought that their happiness, you know, was a little bit different. Also, there's apparently another puzzle over here that I missed. So I'm going to go grab that real quick. 
which has one more item for the decorations. And then next time that we play, we'll um, look at the puzzles that they give me for that. But I wanted to make sure that I got all the uh, all the items for the end rooms because I felt like I was missing some from somewhere. I just wasn't sure where, though I'm sure I would have gotten the puzzles later. Look how old this picture is. All right, that reminds me of a good one. Would you like to hear it? I don't know if you could even hear me now that I think about it. Pattern matching. Okay. The large shape below is made up of a pattern. Uh, a section of the shape has been removed. Out of the options A, B, C, and D, which one should you insert into the large shape to complete the pattern? Oh. Okay. So, square, circle, X, square, cir uh, circle, square, X, circle, square, X, circle, square, X, circle, square, X, circle, square. Okay, so it just goes circle, square, X. That means whatever is here, this needs to be an X. Uh, circle, this needs to be a square. Oh, of course, that all turns sideways. I think it's this one. Yes. Because that would be, hold on, don't turn upside down. Square, X, circle. Yep. I think it's B. There we go. <clears throat> Another puzzle solved. Excellent. It's really just a matter of finding the right matching pattern, but staring all staring at all those different pieces and trying to figure out which one fits is more complex than what we think. Alright. Gee, I didn't think it was that easy. Alright. Let's look at the, uh, oh, that's not what I meant to do. Let's look at this. Superb. Now this is a room for any gentleman would be proud to call his own. Staying here should be speed up the investigation. By the way, Luke, I have a present for you to mark this occasion. Turn off your, yep, DS, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Decorator's house. Awesome. That means next time we play, we will have extra puzzles to solve, which is super awesome. All right, now I'm gonna go all the way back up. I'm not gonna make you guys, oh. Wait while I go back. Um, I'm just gonna cut there if I remember to cut it. If I don't, I'm really sorry. I'm really bad at editing. I'm not really bad at editing. I'm just really lazy at editing. We'll go with that. I'm really lazy at editing. Okay, here we are, back at the manor, in we go. Hey Matthew, welcome back Professor Layton, please come in, everyone is waiting. Thank you Matthew, is something troubling you my good man, you seem ill at ease. Oh no, I'm fine sir, please make your way to the parlor. Alright, if you're certain that nothing's the matter, we'll head upstairs. Uh, Mr. Layton, thank you for arriving so promptly. Come, have a seat. Why have you called us here, Inspector Chelmy? Like you, I'm not the kind of man who beats around the bush, so I'll just come out with it. I'm on to you, Layton. It's clear as day. You're responsible for Simon's death. <laughs> Are you suggesting I murdered Simon? Nonsense. <laughs> nice, Layton. I have to admire the way you kept your cool under pressure. <laughs> but of course I would expect nothing less from a cold-blooded killer such as yourself. I suppose you've seen this before, eh? His face was on display in the room in which Simon was found dead. The, all the forensics evidence I suggest gathered suggests the killer struck Simon with his face. Our killer was no professional. You see, he left his fingerprints all over the murder weapon. Fingerprints that match your own, Mr. Layton. Oh, that's the face from the market, isn't it? You rotten murderer. If this face is evidence, why you just break it like it was nothing? So go on and give me an alibi, Layton. Where were you when Simon was killed, eh? Come on, out with it. I was with Luke, investigating matters down in the village. Is that the best you can muster? It's clear that little brat is an accomplice to your crime. Admit it, Layton. You two wanted to keep the golden apple so badly you conspired to murder Simon. You can't fool me, Layton, so cough it up and start talking. While I'm at it, I'll take the key to the tower you picked up, too. It seems that you're intent on pinning me this crime on me, Inspector, but if you're true enforcer of the law, you'll acknowledge that I'm not the only reasonable suspect. Any member of this household could have committed this crime. In fact, you can't even rule out the possibility that everyone here had a hand in the murder. 
Furthermore, are we even sure that a murder took place here? What kind of nonsense are you spouting now? Do you really think every anyone here is fooled by your crackpot theories? Inspector Chomey, I'm beginning to think the only person here with something to hide is you. That's absurd. This has nothing to do in the slightest with me. No, Inspector, it has quite a bit to do with you. Meaning? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? If there is any criminal element involved in this case, then it is you, sir. Oh, that's absurd. <coughs> I've heard you're quite the devoted husband, Inspector. I bet you take very good care of your wife, Amy. Luke and I found this article in the paper. Luke, what was Inspector Chalmy's favorite food again? Uh, fresh sweet potato fritters. This article specifically states that you love sweet potato fritters, and yet you raged at Port Matthew when he brought your sweets and tea. Why? And your point is, just so happens that I have a fondness for Amy's sweet potato fritters. Is that so? Thank you, Inspector. This little conversation has made things quite clear. Please take a look at this. I believe you just called them Amy's sweet potato fritters, yes, and I love everyone to look at this article. As you can see, the article clearly states that Inspector Chalmy's wife is Emil Emily, not Amy. Do you mean to tell me that you've forgotten your own wife's name? Mm. Out with it then. Who are you and why have you been impersonating Inspector Chalmy? Why have you been running this investigation? Mm. But your sudden memory loss regarding your wife's name isn't the only thing suspicious about you. Try to recall the time around Simon's death. You said you received a report that prompted you to come say to St. Mysterio, but you forgot one thing. After Luke and I came to town, the drawbridge that is St. Mysterio's sole entrance had his crank stolen. This effectively sealed the village. From that point on, no one could enter or leave the village. And do you recall just when this seclusion began? When did the drawbridge shut down? Uh, during the search for Claudia. Correct. The only route out of the village had been closed since well before Simon's death was discovered. After that event, there was no way that anyone outside the village could enter. By the same token, there was no way to take things out of the village, particularly as something as large as a corpse. So tell me, Inspector Chomley, when did you actually first step foot in St. Monsieur? And furthermore, what did you do with Simon's remains? While we're on the subject, I have one more nagging question that I haven't been able to figure out. How is it that you knew about the key to the tower we discovered? When we happened upon that key, there wasn't a soul in the area save for Luke and myself. Furthermore, I've spoken of what we found to no one. There's no conceivable way that you could have known about this key. Unless, of course, you were spying on us from the shadows when we picked it up. Now let me see if I've gotten this all right. You posted the inspector and used Simon's death as an excuse to enter Reinhold Manor. Since then, you've been waiting for the ideal time to strike and steal the golden apple from us. How am I doing so far? <laughs> What's so funny? This is no laughing matter. I'm just... I'm just astounded at how despicable I found you, Leighton. But that's exactly why you're worthy of being my arch enemy. Don Paolo, I've always despised you, Leighton. I thought I'd be able to crush you once and for all here in St. Mysterio. But that will have to wait since you saw through my disguise. You haven't caught on yet, but St. Mysterio hides a secret of epic proportions. <laughs> when I imagine a dimwit like you trying to unravel the mystery, I just have to smile. My business here for the day has come to an end, so I'll be off now. But listen closely, late. Never forget how close you came to being bested. One day, I, the great Don Paolo, will rain my revenge down upon you. My vengeance down upon you. And on that fearful day, you will beg for an umbrella and a raincoat, perhaps even some galoshes. <laughs> Gosh. And he broke the window. Couldn't he just went out the front door? Hmm. I guess he's gone. Do you know who that man was? Don Paolo is his name. I've heard stories of him. His grasp of hard sciences was rumored to be unrivaled. Problem, as you might guess, was his personality. Though he was a genius, the man was evil. 
Science board banished him from working officially in his field ever again. Sneaking into St. Mysterio to steal the Reinhold fortune sounds like the kind of scheme he would hatch. He seems to hold quite a grudge against you, Professor. What did you do to cross him? I haven't the slightest idea, Luke. Well, that aside, what was all this talk of a secret hidden in the village? What was he talking about? I'm mystified by it myself. For the time being, though, let's focus on finding the golden apple, shall we? I say we follow our newest lead and head for that tower. Let's check the dead end from before, Luke. All right. Cool. Chapter solved. Mmm. Getting mysteries. Tell me solved. Am I still... Yep. Okay, hold on. On route to the mansion, we ran into that shawled girl again. I meant to ask her many things, but she vanished moments after she appeared. She stayed just long enough to warn us to stay away from the tower. Arriving at the manor, I noticed something peculiar about Matthew's expression today. Why has the inspector called us here? Behind the vinyl mask, the man who had posed as the inspector all this time was none other than the brilliant scientist Don Paolo. It seems he, too, was after the Reinhold fortune. He alluded to some larger mystery at work here in the village. I'm fairly certain I know which one he means. Oop, that's not what I meant to do. Go back. What a shock! Who could have imagined that Don Paolo, self-proclaimed archenemy of the professor, was posing as the inspector in an effort to steal the Reinhold fortune. The true inspector, Chomi, never set foot in St. Mysterio and is probably at home in London and enjoying tea and sweets right now. Hopefully is not as gruff and mean. Alright, do you guys have some puzzles for me? I'd like some puzzles before I head back. My hair is just on fire today. I'm simply shocked, shocked at this turn of events. Who could have guessed that we had an imposter in our midst? He had me completely fooled. But you saw right through him, Professor. I must say, I'm quite impressed with your cunning. I ask you now to push that brilliant mind of yours at work again and set out in search of the golden apple. It would be my pleasure, madam. By the way, are you feeling all right? You look a bit pale. Hmm. I awoke this morning with memories of a particular dream I must have had last night. In it, my husband and I had just had a brand new baby girl. Oh, how everyone fawned over her. The next moment, suddenly I was in a park, walking hand in hand with my young daughter. With your daughter, you say? Now, why would I have a silly dream like that? These past few days have been really quite draining. Hmm. Professor Layton, I don't feel particularly well at the moment. I think I'll go lie down for a bit. What's wrong with Lady Dahlia? She says she had a dream of walking in the park with her young daughter. There's something quite curious about that dream. Ooh. Would you please let me know if any eligible black shorts meet you in your travels? Are you actually laying down? Are you okay? I'd like to be left alone for a little while, Professor. I need some time to collect my thoughts. I think everyone here has some sort of, like, Irish accent, but I can't... I, I haven't quite pinned it until I got to the guy with the sewer. I need to clean off my glasses. I can't see a damn thing. Oh. Eh. There's... Thank you. A hint going up here, according to the dog. But yeah, it seems that everyone here has got an Irish accent. And this seems to be a Irish or Scottish part of town, which would be really easy if I actually knew that to begin with. But like I said, until I met the guy in the sewer, I had no idea that these were supposed to be Irish or Scottish. Like, one of them, I think, is a, uh, what is it called? Uh... Oh, have you ever seen the movie Snatch? And you got that guy, and they, he speaks really fast. Ugh. The, Brad Pitt played him. Can't remember what the accent was called. Hey, Raymond. Lady Dahlia's requests are always on such a handful to take on, aren't they? Uh huh. Uh huh. Of course, not everyone here might be Irish or Scottish. It's very possible that there are a bunch of other things. This guy. Lady Dahlia, she is gorgeous. Ain't she? Yep, she is. What a dish. What a doll. What a honey. Guys like that are pretty bad, I tell you. Yep, yep. But yeah, it seems that that's kind of what they're basing this off of. Actually, hold on. I kind of want to see if anybody's here. Still no. What is this even here for? It's a general store where nobody works. People can just take things. 
Which I guess no one in this village would. I live in a city, so it's kind of far-fetched that someone would leave a whole store unattended. So. it's a lot of places where it's just like, yeah, okay, whatever, but... Mm, I don't know. Don't like that one bit. One bit. <sighs> Got a new parcel for you, dearie. I'll bet you're just dying to see it, aren't you? I'm sorry, madam, but we're in a terrible rush. Mm -hmm. We can't fool this whole galaxy strolling around solving other people's puzzles, and now it's my turn. Sinus, what do you mean? Have you been following us? Rolling a three. Oh, brother. When you roll a die, the chances of rolling a three are one in six. The chances of rolling a three twice in a row are one in 36. And the chances of rolling a three three times in a row is a jaw dropping one in 216. Let's assume you roll a die three times to get a three each time. Your chances of rolling a three on your next roll are one in how many? Um, hold on a second. Six times 36. Let me make sure I got this right. I think this is the math. Six times six is thirty-six. Here the three. Uh, what? I did that wrong. Whatever. And then six times three is twelve. Not twelve. Eighteen plus three is two sixteen. Yep. Okay. So two sixteen. Oops. Two one six. Times six. Six times six is thirty-six. Carry the three. One and times six is six. Plus three is nine. And then two times six is twelve. One two nine six. One two nine six. <coughs> No? Probably making the puzzle more complicated than it needs to be. Keep things simple and you'll find your answer. Well, hold on a minute. I get bamboozled. It's one in six. <laughs> Because you're just rolling it once more. Did all that math for nothing. We're just rolling one more die. Terrific. It doesn't matter how many times you roll the same number. If you're only asking about the probability of rolling three in one turn, the chances will always be one in six. <laughs> you're, you're going to the tower, aren't you, Jerry? How about I show you the way? Oh, I was under the impression that the villagers in St. Mysterio hated going near the tower. Um, oh, yes. I don't want to go anywhere near that place myself. Though I suppose I can make an exception for such a strapping man such as yourself. Oh, yes. Um, Professor, we should really keep moving. I would really like to keep moving. But, like, she might have another puzzle. I'm not about to pass up a puzzle. So I want some company to go with you to the tower. Some feminine company? No, thank you. I think we're just fine as it is. You're right. I'm gonna not. It's a dead end. No two ways about it. Maybe there's another hidden path to the tower around here. I'd argue we've come to the, exactly the right spot, Luke. What do you mean by that? Look right here, Luke. There's a small indenture in the wall where one could place a small object. So this must be... Yes, curious indentation is no doubt the spot indicated in Baron Reinhold's note to Archibald. I'm willing to wager that if we put this in there and give it a turn... Uh, yeah, sure. That's probably what the terrible rumbling was. Wow. Just as I suspected. All right, Luke, in we go. Psh. Chapter 9. Solve the key. Puzzles are getting solved left and right. Save your progress? Okay. We're getting close to the end of this mystery. 
110 puzzles solved. Here, let's look at this real quick. Journal entry. The path opens. These and the key we found beneath the waterside shack in the note in Archibald's desk. We have managed to open a path to the tower. I'm relieved that we have finally made true progress in our investigation. But this is no time to revel. What mysteries await inside? That's a great question. <sighs> oh, cool. It's got a little thing because they're happy. The note that left that the Baron left in Archibald's desk gave Leighton the clue he needed to realize that the key fit into the wall on the north end of town. From there, the professor and Luke could access the path to the tower. Heck yeah. All right. I'm going to go ahead and save and qu wait. No, I'm not going to save and quit here because we still have a few more minutes before I do anything because I have to skip ahead. So we'll keep going for now. And... When we come back next time, we'll do the uh, extra stuff. So I guess let's walk up to the door. To this creepy ass tower. Hmm. Yep, looks like you've solved at least 75 puzzles. Alright, then go on in the tower. This place gives me the creeps. Plus it's all murky in here and I can't see a thi- Hmm? Oh my. Ugh! They fell through the floor. You okay? Ugh, my head. Luke, are you alright, my boy? No injuries, I hope. Don't worry, Professor, I'm fine. And yourself? Nothing is, nothing a good long bath later won't solve. But more importantly, where are we? Oh, a good long bath sounds so good right now. This room is stuffed to the gills with curious machines. I've never seen anything like them. What do you suppose they do? What in the world? Look over there on the wall, Professor. My word. There are reviews from all over town displayed here. Don't they almost look like blueprints? And what's this? Almost every villager's name is on this wall. Professor, what if somebody's using this place to keep an eye on what's going on in St. Monsieur? Hmm. Looks like there are stairs over there. Let's get out of here. This place gives me goosebumps. Guys, you're quite white, Luke. Let's head out. But there's things here I want to look at. Oh, what's this notebook? Did you find something interesting? I think so. This notebook looks like someone's been using it as a diary. Just a little longer now. Soon this village will complete the task it was designed for. I've waited so long for this day, but as it comes closer, I feel a little lonely. Hope that at the very least, the young mistress finally finds happiness at the end of all this. This poor journal looks like it's been through a lot. All the pages are terribly frayed. What all the scraps of paper we found in the village came from here? Oh, yeah, okay. It's just gonna make me read it again. Stop, 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 stop. There needs to be a skip button. There's a lot of junk here. I can't find everything, dog. Hold on. Okay. I don't know what else I could possibly find. I think that's everything that I can find in here. All right, out we go. Ah, what's this? You. Hm. You two again. What are you doing here? What are you up to? Just a moment, sir. What are you talking about? I knew it! You came here to steal my secrets, didn't you? Didn't you? Don't play dumb with me. I see right through you. Don't think I haven't been watching. I've seen you two sniffing about every nook and cranny in town getting in the way of my work. Now I've had it, so unless you want in trouble, give me back number 38. Please calm yourself, sir. Just listen to what we have to say for a moment. We haven't intended to get in the way of your work. We're merely searching for the golden apple. Neither of us know anything about this number 38 business. Oh! Did you just say the golden apple? You're really here looking for the golden apple then? Precisely. Do you know anything that could be of help to us? Hmm, so that's how it is, huh? What you're looking for is on the top floor of the tower, but watch out, because puzzles in the tower are harder than a whole mess of diamond tip drills. I know they call you a puzzle master, but are you sure you have what it takes to solve them? Now, why would you go and tell us something like that? Why you just want to set us up to walk right into some sort of trap? Now, what would I possibly gain from doing something like that? 
Not to mention, it's my duty to guide those who seek the golden apple to their goal. Some mischief maker stuck into the village and had me all confused, but I think I figured things out now. Seeing as how it's your duty and all, would you mind filling us in? What is St. Mysterious' big secret? All right. My name is Bruno. I work for the Reinhold family. For some time now, I've managed St. Mysterious from up here in the tower. Manage St. Mysterious? You're the one who manages the life of each villager, aren't you? What in the world are you two talking about? Surely you must have seen them too, Luke. Do you recall the cogs we found about the village and the list of names we saw in that room? All the villagers in St. Mystery Mysterio are robots created by Bruno. What do you mean the villagers are all robots? In other words, the inhabitants of St. Mysterio aren't human, but intricately constructed machines. They're robots, my boy. I have to say, I'm astonished that anyone could build such elaborate machines in this day and age. You must be quite the engineer, sir. Oh, aren't you a sharp one? I never imagined you figured out so much of the mystery by yourself. What do you mean, sir? St. Mysterio isn't a real town, Luke. It was constructed by Bruno and the late Baron. How am I doing so far, Bruno? You're right on the money. I have to believe that one day an heir worthy of his fortune would come forward. He me build a city in Ahu and dwell within it to prepare for that day. Then he hid his greatest treasure, the golden apple, away in the top floor of this tower. I was ordered to protect it with my life. Until the person arrives who can solve the puzzle of the golden apple, I'll continue to protect it. Remarkable. I'm impressed at how far Baron Reinhold went to protect his treasure. It's not just any treasure, mind you. The golden apple was the Baron's most pre precious treasure. But why go all through all this trouble just to hide treasure? Why build an entire village to protect it? Oh, whoops. Seems I've been a little loose-lipped here. I've already said more than I should have. The answers you're looking for are waiting for you at the top of this tower. Go on, then. Show me if you're the one who could solve the puzzle of the golden apple. Hmm. No? Hold on. Yes, thank you. After a bit of a tumble, we came face to face with the man who abducted Raymond. The man, Bruno, laid out the bare truth for us. The town was, as I suspected, constructed from the ground up. Now I'm certain that the treasure we seek waits for us at the top of this tower. Huh, okay. The deductions around town were actually the work of Bruno, who moved under the cover of night to retrieve his broken robots. Bruno would bring robots back to the tower to repair them and return them to the village. As none of the villagers knew that they were actually robots, it's only natural that they were terrified by the strange old man. Small cogs recovered by Leighton and Luke came from the S Simon and Raymond when they collapsed. The cogs, along with the mysterious disappearances he observed around the village, convinced Leighton that all the villagers in St. Mysterio were robots. Alright. Cool. Anything else down here that I need? Are you still down here? Do you have a puzzle for me? I would really like a puzzle. I have work to do now. For that matter, so do you. Shouldn't you two get to climbing? The top of the tower is a long ways up. Go on now, off with you. Well, fine. Rude. What's this? Professor, look, the stairs are barred off. Ah, uh -huh, this must be one of the puzzles Bruno warned us about. It looks quite difficult. This is perfect timing, my boy. I'm in the mood for a puzzle with some meat to it. Yeah. 94. Get the ball out for a fuck my life. Why? A perplexing device door has a device on it that contains a small red ball in the upper left corner. If you guide the ball to the hole in the lower right, it looks like the door might open. Uh, life.
There we go. Critical thinking is the key to success. Awesome. <sighs> there we are. Come, Luke. We must press on. All right. Lead the way, Professor. Say, Professor, there's something that's been on my mind for a while. Oh, what is that, Luke? When the crank for the bridge was stolen, we were still in the village along with Don Paolo. Could be just me, but I feel like this wasn't just a coincidence. Someone planned it, but who? <laughs> well, Luke, I don't have any direct evidence of it, but I wager it was Bruno's doing. Bruno, but why in the world would Bruno do something like that? Do you remember what he said? It's his duty to show the way to those who seek the golden apple. But naturally, Bruno had no idea what kind of people would come to St. Mysterio who was seeking the treasure. It's likely that he trapped us in the village to buy himself some time to evaluate who we were. He wanted to see if we were worthy of the secret. That's terribly presumptuous of him, don't you think? How could he think either of us were bad people? He doesn't even know us. <laughs> who knows what Bruno's, how Bruno saw it, Luke? I'm certain he was just being careful. After all, Don Paolo managed to sneak in with us. Bruno probably had his hands full and needed time to see what kind of people had entered the village. Oh, that reminds me. I wanted to ask about that, too. Luke, we really should get started here. You can ask me your next question while we're climbing. Cool. Wait, can I go back out? I can. Interesting. Watch your step. Any other hint coins here? All right. Um, Bruno, caretaker to all of St. Mysterio, was the one who stole the crank for the bridge. Bruno's intent was to keep the professor in the village long enough to determine his worthiness as a guardian of Flora. For Flora. All right. I don't see why this one hasn't been solved, honestly. All right. Um, before we go up the stairs, I'm going to end that episode there. I'm going to see if we can save and quit and go back to the title screen to solve the other mysteries. We are so close to the end of this game. The other one might be just a super long video. But um, sorry that Slay the Spire and Professor Layton is all you've been watching lately because that's all I've recorded. That's all I've wanted to record. And I'm going to record what I want to record. Whether or not you watch it, that's up to you. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next episode of whatever I decide to make. Internet signing out. Bye.